In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a combo variance chart, which is a bar chart that shows actual values, along with a bar chart that shows the progress of each of these data points. We're going to look at how you can do this simply by using the out-of-the-box visuals in Power BI Desktop, and also what other paid options are available to you if you want to use this type of chart. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So to keep it super simple, a variance chart is simply a bar chart that shows the progress of your data point against another. It's typically represented with colors, so you will have green as positive or red as negative, which makes it very easy to tell if the value went up or down. You can typically show this either showing the absolute value in variance or as a percentage. So this is an excerpt from the IBCS standards, which I covered in a recent video, which shows variance or showing variance in combination with other visuals. So you can see in this figure 4.1, for each row, you have, let's say, the UK values. And in that same row, it also shows the variance as an actual value and the variance as a percentage. Now, while the default visuals in Power BI can't completely replicate these charts or these chart elements like the lollipops, or even as simple as the fill types, we can try to build something similar that resembles it with the default visuals. So here's the Power BI report that we'll be working with today. There are just three tables in our model here. We have the calendar table, which obviously is the usual calendar table that we use for time intelligence. We have the order details table, which has the majority of the information that we will need, the quantity of each of the orders and unit price. I've also added here a sales measure, which simply calculates the total sales by multiplying the unit price to the quantity. And I also have the orders table here, which simply gives the date the order was made. So if we look at the relationship here, we can see the order details as the fact table. We have the relationships going on between the calendar to the orders, and then from the orders to the order details table. Now let's start by visualizing the sales that we have created here, this measure. And let's put this in a year month group. So I'm just going to make this into a table, organize them by year, month like this. There we go. So I'm going to simply copy and paste this table and convert one of them into a bar chart, which is what we want to do at the end of the day. So we're just going to change it into a bar chart like this. So essentially what we want from here is to create a variance chart on top of this visual so that we can see the variance and how big or how small the unit changes have been for each of these months. And we will start and we'll have to start by creating a new measure which calculates the variance uh, for our values. So we're going to start by creating a new measure here. We're going to name this variance and in this case we're going to calculate the percentage. So the first thing that we need to do is obviously as a sales or if you look at the table here, we first need to get what is the previous value of our sales in context to each of the month. Now, we've already covered this in previous videos before, which is simply just using the same sales calculation, but using previous month as a filter context. So we're going to use the date from the calendar table like this. And if you just hit enter here, we're just going to put this in a table just so that we can preview how this looks like. I'm going to drag in what we've just created. So you can see that, for example, August 1996, the current sales is 26,000 and the value before is 30,000 pounds. So let's continue. So now we need to calculate the variance itself, which is comparing the sales against the previous sales. So we're going to wrap this into a variable you name the variable previous like this. And then we're going to return. And in this case, we're going to simply divide. So we're going to divide sales 
I believe I need to wrap it like this sales minus previous year divided by the previous year so this is I believe the calculation to in order to calculate the percentage difference now if I hit enter here you'll notice the value sort of goes crazy here and that's because we need to change the variance percentage format into a percentage instead we can change the decimal places into zero so that we can easily see it and I think this is correct so you will see that for August 1996 the sales have gone down 12 percent compared to last month which I think is roughly correct so one thing I'm trying to avoid is an example like this June 1998 which gives us minus 100 percent variance where there are no sales I don't want this table or this measure to return any value so we can do that simply by making a small change here so our divide we will wrap this in an if statement so I'm going to write an if here and close it here so if the sales here is not blank I'm going to add a not here and comma. So what this will do is it will only calculate the divide if there is a sales value in that context. Now if you hit enter now, you'll notice that that last part has disappeared. Another thing I want to ensure in this solution is that there are no blanks in the variance percentage. In this case, this first one here, July 1996, although there is a sales value there, it has nothing to compare against because that is the earliest date uh, that we have in our data set. So we wanna make sure that if this is the case, we just want to show 0% instead of blank and you'll understand why I want to do this later on. So we're gonna go back to our measure here and here instead of having just one variable, we'll create another variable, we'll name it previous to, just to make it simple. I'm gonna create an if statement, and this one simply just checks if the previous is blank. So if the previous is blank, we wanna just take the value from the sales, otherwise give me the value of the previous. So this ensures that, for example, if you have a sales value, but you don't have a previous, you will just divide by yourself, which will return as zero. So what we're going to do, in our return, we're going to replace previous references to this second variable that we've created. Hit enter. And now you will see that in that first section or that July 1996, instead of blank, it will show as 0%. And that's the variance percentage pretty much done in the measure itself. So you can see that for each month, it gives us the variance percentage, which is exactly what we needed. So the first thing that we need to do is obviously we need to look at the bar chart that we want to use in this combo variance chart. In this case, this is just this bar chart that we've created at the beginning, which shows the value of the sales for each of the month in our data sets. Now we can do just a little bit of formatting here just to make it a little bit cleaner. So first of all, a couple of things here the y-axis we need to remove because it's a bit redundant even the title is same with this one with the title the type here we can change this into categorical or in fact you can just leave it as continuous like that we also want to do other things like remove the background and you'll see why in a second and we'll also hide the title something like this now what we need to do is simply copy the visual paste just make sure they're on top of each other like this and then simply move that chart up slightly like this just on top of that visual and then we'll replace the sales in the y-axis into the variance percentage you can see as you can see here we'll also do a couple of formatting here to make sure that everything is as it should be and it's important that you don't completely turn off the x-axis here because otherwise the values that we have won't be aligned 
to the values that we have here in this bar at the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply hide this by going to format your visual, x-axis, and then under values, instead of whatever that color is, the gray or black, you will change it to the same color as our background, which in this case is just white, like this. Another thing that we can do is to change the colors of the bars themselves to signify the variance if it's either going up or down. And that's actually pretty simple. We can go to the columns here, and instead of the default that we have here, we can choose conditional formatting here, which we can change the colors or set the colors of the bars based on certain rules. So we'll just set the rules based on the values that we have on the variance percentage that we've created. We'll add new rule here. We'll change all of the comparisons to numbers because I've never made it work with percentages so far. But if it's greater than or equals to zero or less than 99, we'll do minus 99 to zero. For this one, we want it to be green, which we'll just choose blue as our green and red would be going down like this. If we now hit OK, you will see, see that gives us the variance color for each of the rows here in our bar chart. So that's a very simple solution that we've implemented using just the out of the box visuals in Power BI. And what you'll notice is that each of these bar charts are aligned because we've taken the liberty of just making sure that for each element in the sales, there is a corresponding variance value in it not blanks. So what you'll notice if we go and add a slicer here, for example, and add order date as a slider. And if we choose different ranges, so let's say, let's, let's shorten the range here, you will see that the values roughly match here, or well, they do match uh, in the same order in the, in the, in the same line no matter what m changes you make in this slider. So that's how you can implement this solution using just the default visuals. However, if you're looking for something that doesn't require visual techniques like this, you can think about using one of the custom visuals that Zebra BI produces. So Zebra BI have a collection of visuals in the app source, which lets you do this to your data and more without having to create sort of custom solutions like what we've done just now. It is a paid solution though, so if you want to take full advantage of everything that it can do, you will have to pay a small fee every month to do it. However, if you want to just try out the solution first to see if it fits what your needs are, they do have a free tier option. So I suggest you try it out if you want to. And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with incorporating variance charts in your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching, as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't turn it to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.